to him that is weary. He weakeneth morning by morning. He weakeneth mine ear to hear as the Lord. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Verse 6, I gave my back to the smiters, and my cheek to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. <laughs> And I know, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that is justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Exactly. And that, that's the sentiment that we hold, man. <clears throat> the Most High had raised us up. The Most High had gave us the tongue of the learned, man, so that we can speak to the to the brothers and the sisters that come up and want to inquire of the Most High. But in in uh in getting that tongue of the learn, we had to go and we had to meditate within the scriptures. We had to sit there and we had to learn the scriptures. It said that he, he um we wake it day by day, we listen day by day, something to that nature. We had to study these scriptures, man. We had to study on the words of our forefathers. We had to find the old paths. And that's the thing what you got to go for is the, the old way, man. We live in a modern society, right? What they call a big experiment of democracy. And everything's supposed to be new and everything old is supposed to be worthless, right? But that's exactly wrong. You got to go to the old past. You got to go to the back to your forefathers, man. And back to the ancient days. Go ahead, read, read the old past. You got to preach the old Bring it out, I think. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Thus saith Yahweh Shimei Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. Right, the old paths. What's the old paths? It's back in the scriptures, back to your ancient forefathers, man. Alright? You are the tribe of Israel. You're the 12 tribes of Israel, man. According to the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Go ahead. But they said, we will not walk therein. A lot of our people don't want to walk in the old way. They want to go for what's for this modern day experiment, man. All these laws that you can't even keep up with. But in our in the Old Testament, you got laws in the Old Testament, and it's not a million thousand, it's not a million laws. Laws that you can keep, such as the dietary law. Alright, go ahead. Verse 17, also I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. Right, and that's why we out here. Somebody give, give me Hosea 1 and 10 one time. That's why we out here. The Most High set up his prophets to come out and teach, to tell our people who they are. Somebody else give me uh, Ezekiel chapter 2. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Let me ask you a question real quick. If you don't want to ask this question, cool, you know. What nation now, what nation did they tell you you were? What nation were you told that you were? You don't know? Read that again. Did they tell you that you were uh, the chosen people? I learned that. Yeah, I learned that. Right. Now, if y'all know, in the Constitution, do you know what they said about you? About black men? What was it? You were three fourths of a man? Three fifths of a man. I heard they upped it recently. So, can I be the chosen? If you're three fifths of a man, that means you're not even a whole man. I mean, you definitely not the chosen. So read that again. Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Man, the children of Israel is innumerable. It's a bunch of so-called Negroes, right? You got American Negroes. You got Negroes in the West Indies. You got Haitians. You got Negroes in um, Europe, France. 
uh, Germany, everywhere, right? You can't number them, they so big. But they divide you up They say, you're American, I'm Jamaican, he's Trinidadian, he's uh, British, he's French. They divide you up so you don't think your nation is that big. You look at each other as different people, but you're all the same people. Go ahead. Which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. They had they told y'all when they when they took us and they brought us in slavery, they said, you know what? You guys are Hamites. And and y'all fall under the curse that um that Noah put on, on Ham. Y'all Hamites, y'all coming to slavery. That Hamites are not the children of Israel. That's what they told you who you are. But now, in the same place that they told you you were Ham, and you supposed to be a servant or a slave, we're telling you that you're the children of Israel. You're the most high chosen people. Why? Because it's according to prophecy. Go ahead. Somebody give me proof as well. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Right, and that's what we're telling y'all. Y'all are the children of Israel. Israel and the Hebrews, Yah, Shah, Allah. Yah meaning he, Shah meaning prince, Allah meaning power. Meaning he is the prince of the power. He is the son of God. That's what we're telling y'all. Y'all are the children of the Most High. You're the sons of God. Go ahead. Psalms chapter 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are God, and all of you are children of the Most High. Did they ever tell y'all in the church or wherever that y'all were God? Never told y'all that, right? It tells you in the scripture that the children of Israel are God. You're, now, you ever wonder why they call him the Most High God? If it's only one God, right? Why is he called the Most High God? You ever wonder why? Because he's the highest God over all the other gods. Guess who the other gods is? It's y'all. The children of Israel are God. Now, what does the word God mean? It's from Allah. It means power. All right? The word Allah, the A, it looks like, you know how A is? Turn that A sideways and put a line straight through it. If you flip it around, it looks like the head of a, um, a buck. Because when the Israelites seen the bucks out there, the rams hit each other's head. They said that was power. That was powerful. So Allah means power or judge. You guys are the judges of the earth. Give me, um, first, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. You're the gods of the earth. Most High set you up to judge this earth. When the Most High come back, or who they call Jesus Christ come back, you're going to set you all up, these people right here, to judge the whole, work, the, the whole earth in righteousness. That's your job as Israelite men. You got it? Go ahead. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Now give me all Psalms chapter, all that, give me Psalms, the second to the last chapter, the second to the last verse, so we know who the saints are. The saints are the children of Israel. Read that one more time in all Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2 Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? So he's asking the question. Y'all don't know the saints going to judge the world? That's what he's asking. The answer is yes, the saints are going to judge the world. The saints being who? Israel. You guys. And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels. Guess what? Y'all gonna be over the angels. Now, you ever heard the statement, the first shall be last and the last shall be first? Y'all heard that before? You heard it? Who's the last in this, in, in the world? Who's the last? Who's on the bottom? Who? Exactly. Who's on the top? <coughs> Revelation 13, I'm sorry. Revelation 13 and 10. You got some more on that? Go ahead. Psalms chapter 150. Sorry, no, this is Psalms chapter 148, verse 14. 
He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. So who's gonna rule the earth? Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Exactly. So, the first shall be last, the last shall be first. Now, the man that led us into captivity, that killed us with guns, he's going into captivity. He's going to be killed with guns. He's going to become the last. We're going to become the first. Rulers of the whole earth. Right? What else, what else he said to you? Read 15 first. Read verse 15 first. Now, you're probably wondering why are we go into slavery, right? Like, what? If God, if God loved us so much, why would he take us put us in the slavery? Under the so-called white man, right? Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of thy Lord, thy power, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Right, so in the ancient days, when the people came out of Egypt with Moses, they made a covenant with the Most High. When the people came out of Egypt, they made a covenant with the Most High. That they would keep his laws and that they would be his people. And that he would be their God and protect them. So obviously, right here, it tells you that if you keep these laws, you're not going to bless you. If you break these laws and what I tell you to do, then I'm going to curse you. All these curses shall fall upon you. But we know that you are the Israel is victory. They were going into captivity because they broke the law. Believers, verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of thy Lord, thy power, and Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, now it's never written, written in the record book that Israel went into slavery again in, um, in Egypt. Exodus chapter 20 verse 2 tells you that Egypt is bonded. Also the word Egypt comes from the um, Greek Egypto and it's bonded. So what does it mean right there? It means you're going to go into bondage again. The high spirit. Go into bondage by what? With ships. Who came into any type of bondage on ships? Who came with? Was it y'all? Was it your ancestors? No. Yeah, probably your ancestors. That's how that's why we can tell you the problem is to the children of Israel. Because your ancestors fit that problem. God said, when they call God said, if you don't follow my law, these this is what's gonna happen. And he's breathing to you. And obviously, we came from slave, we came to America and everywhere else on slave ships. So that means that we're the children of Israel. You can also get the uh, by word of Proverbs. Right. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring me into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spoke unto thee, right. and thou shalt see it no more again, right. and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Right, so that means that we're going to come into captivity again. By what? By slave ships. Now what does it mean, no man shall buy you? It means, and when you go into the Hebrew, it means no man is going to save you. Why does it say that? Because who they call Jesus Christ is going to say to the children of Israel, that's why. Mosiah is going to come and say to the children of Israel, it's not going to be a man. That's why Malcolm X and no other person can save the children of Israel out of this captivity. All right, go back to what the Lord um, The old past. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 yeah. 
Uh, Y'all can bring our pizza to you. I got pizza. Thus saith Yahweh, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where's the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. Right, meaning that them old paths are talking about the scriptures, man. Right? The ways and the words, the words of our, our forefathers, the words of the Most High that our forefathers wrote down for us. It says in the book of Romans that the things written before time were written for our learning. Right? That's why the Most High gonna destroy niggas, man. Two thirds of these niggas gonna die, man. Because they don't want they don't want nothing to do with it. Matter of fact, yeah, I actually seen that chapter too. Let me get that. Then Hosea, uh, what is it? Hosea chapter four, verse one. That's why two thirds of our people. That's what you know what. That's why the Most High is gonna have to kill certain of our people. Because this so-called white man got a, a hole on their mind so bad that they just got to be destroyed. That's the only thing that's going to work for them, man. All right, hold up. It's like they got to get a reset button, man. Like, okay, when, when uh, Moses came out of Egypt and uh, certain of the Israelites were worshiping that, um, that fucking calf, what had to happen? They had to be killed, man. Then they wandered in the desert for what, 40 years? Because the Most High had to let that generation die off. Well, it's gonna be the same thing this, this time coming. Two thirds of these so-called Negroes, Native American and Hispanics, they gotta go because their mind is corrupted, man. I used to get mad at niggas like that, but I don't even get mad no more because his mind is just corrupted. All he is, he's a virus, man. You know how your computer get a virus and it corrupt all your files? That niggas, that's, that's what happened to two thirds of our people. They corrupted files, man. That had to be deleted. Go ahead. This is Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 14. Therefore, pray not for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me so when, for their trouble. So when uh when, I, when the Most High start pronouncing true judgment on this place, when you start seeing the judgment of the Most High on America and all the other countries, niggas gonna be crying for the Most High. Oh my God, oh my God. That's when niggas gonna get on their knees and pray. Guess who not gonna be listening? The Most High ain't gonna be listening to them, man. Because the time of repentance is right now. The time to get right is right now. Not when everything start popping off. And then when, when, that, when those things start happening, it's gonna be too late for him, man. So it's, it's all good. We, we'll be embarrassing niggas. All right, because we don't wanna be a part of the fucking world. Go ahead. Uh, this is Proverbs chapter one, verse 22. How long these simple ones Will ye love simplicity, and the scorners delight in their scorning? They love simplicity. They love being simple, man. They love being fools, man. Being fools. I mean, niggas love being clones, man. I seen that dude had the hat on. I seen three niggas walk down here with the same fucking hat on. Same hat that clown hat on, man. Niggas love being being uh, fools, man. They love the simplicity of this world. They're gonna tell you you come from monkeys, you're gonna believe that shit because some man in a suit told you that. Some white dude told you that. Go ahead, bro. Uh, Proverbs chapter one, verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorner. Keep scorning, man. Because there's gonna come a day you're not gonna be able to do that no more, man. It's gonna come a day when we're gonna be laughing at you. We're gonna be drinking our wine, laughing at you. Like it tells you in the, in the book of uh, it's either Jeremiah or Isaiah. My servants will laugh when you mourn, man. Go ahead. And fools hate knowledge. Keep reading that. After you're done, you're gonna get it. 
Verse 23, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Right, now that's what the Most High is doing now. All right, the Most High sent out the prophets to go out and teach his word, to pour his spirit out to the children of Israel, man. To reprove the children of Israel. Well, at least the elect of the children of Israel and the believers. But we already know that you're not going to listen. You wouldn't even listen to the Most High himself. Go ahead. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and they refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Right. But ye have said at not all my counsel. Right. Talking about the most talking about we're embarrassing niggas. What's so embarrassing about being righteous, man? What's so embarrassing about being law lawful, man? What's so embarrassing? What's so embarrassing? about standing up to your oppressors, man. As it says in Wisdom of Solomon chapter five. But guess what? Since you was offended in your house, shot, you're not gonna be saved, man. Like I said, blessed are those who are not offended in me, man. But a nigga who are and that nigga embarrassed of the words that we speak and how we dress. Go ahead. Did not knowing, let me hit you off with some. Let me hit you off how foolish niggas are. Did you not know that the Assyrians, I think it was the Assyrians, when they seen pants, like how we have on under our garments, they said that that shit was effeminate and it was for women. But a nigga gonna tell us, because it looked like we got dresses on, he gonna tell us that we embarrassing black people. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 24 Because I have called and ye refused I have stretched out my hand And no man regarded But ye have said at not all my counsel Exactly You ain't cut the most high words The same nigga's gonna tell you that we embarrassing black people Probably the same nigga that don't take care of his kids And with none of my reproof I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock with your fear coming. Exactly. So on that day, when all hell start breaking loose and, and, the, and the streets start filling up with dead bodies and the family, the family is going, you can't go to the store and get bread. So niggas kicking in your door, trying to, trying to rob you for your food. When them black ass SUVs start rolling around, they start putting them fucking Gatling guns out the roof and spraying niggas on the corner. We're going to see who you're going to call to then. We're going to see how embarrassing we are then. We're going to see how embarrassing the most high words are then. Go ahead, bro. Now, this is Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 3. And he said unto me, son of man, I sent thee to the children of Israel. Yeah, we sent to the children of Israel. That's why we out here. We out for the so-called Negroes, Native, Native Americans, and Hispanics. That's who we sent to. We ain't out here to look pretty. We out here because the most I sent us to tell y'all his word. Go ahead. Okay. To a rebellious nation that have rebelled against me. Exactly. And that's why you're in the condition that you're in today. And you can go to clubs, but if that police come around that corner, Guess who he's shooting? Guess who them bullets going to? Go ahead. They and their fathers have transgressed, transgressed against me, even unto this day. Exactly. This nigga still, it's going to be a lot of uh, adultery going on tonight, boy. It's going to be a lot of adultery going on tonight after them clubs. Go ahead. Verse 4, for they are impudent children and stiff-hearted. Go ahead. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Like we did with the guys that came up. We read them the prophecies about how did it children of Israel. 
about the Most High saying that in the place where they were told that they were not the children of God, they shall, they shall be said unto them, they are the, the sons of the living God. Go ahead. And wasn't they, and they, oh, sorry, Ezekiel chapter 2, starting at verse 5. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are rebellious, therefore they are a rebellious house. Right. Yet shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Exactly. Yo, give me um. Yes. Give me uh, hold that real quick. Give me Jeremiah chapter six, verse ten to 11, ten and eleven, and you can read after that for y'all. Jeremiah chapter six, verse ten. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. That's why niggas come up and say y'all embarrassing black people. You know, we don't give a fuck about embarrassing black people, because I don't know who the fuck black people are. I never knew the Most High made fucking crowns, man. The Most High made nations. I know Yasharala is. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Most High. I am weary with the holding in. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the age with him that is full of days. Right. Go ahead. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 2 it says, He O heavens and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken, I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel do not know, my people do not, do not consider. Our sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they are going away back. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more, the whole head is sick, and the whole heart is faint. Right. Like I got say, man, two thirds of our people are gonna be destroyed. Somebody give me Thessalonians real quick. Uh, first, what is it? First and second Thessalonians. They shall be, uh, they shall be giving strong delusion, something of that nature. But read whatever you got. It's Hosea chapter four, verse six. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. I thought it verse one. Right. Hosea chapter four, verse one. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Yashar Allah. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Right. Because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of Yahweh in the land. Exactly. Our people don't know who the Most High is, man. Right? Verse 2. By swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they ah. break out, and blood touches blood. That's why these niggas be killing each other. Oh, read that list again. Okay. Verse 2. By swearing, and lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery, they break out, and blood touches blood. That's why niggas be killing each other right there. Go ahead. Verse 3. Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwell there, dwelleth therein shall languish. Right, and that happened in the ancient days, but guess, guess what? That's going to happen again, man. Word up, man. Because there's going to there's gonna be a time where it's going to be straight chaos on the earth. A time like never, like never ever before on this earth, man. And it's going to come to a hood near you. Guess where Esau is going to start at? He's starting them hoods. Because he don't need your ass no more, man. Esau talking about having robots to replace your ass in these factories and then make Donald's these low ass jobs you work. Esau don't need you no more. Go ahead. 
Therefore shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yeah, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Yet let no man strive nor reprove another, for thy people as for thy people are as they that strive with the priests. Exactly. That, that's what we are here. We are here teaching them, they want to argue with us. Keep going now. Verse 5. Therefore shalt thou fall in the day, and the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night. I saw your little, all the motherfuckers in the church, man. Right. And I will de destroy thy mother. Right. For my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. I will also forget thy children. Exactly. The most I ain't, most I ain't gonna fuck around in that day. That's when the most I gonna show that vengeance, man. Because the time of mercy is right now, man. The time to get that mercy from the most high is right now. Seek after the most high right now where he may be found, man. Keep reading. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Therefore, I will change their glory into shame. And that's what's happened. That's that's where we are now. It tells you that in Lamentations that oh, is this the city? Um, is this the city of beauty of the earth? Something of that nature. We were we were once the most righteous people on the earth, man. We had the, the wisest king on the earth, Solomon. Why the people came to us to inquire of, of knowledge? Now look at us. No history, no name. Calling each other black people. Go ahead. Verse eight. They eat up the sin of my people and they set their heart on their iniquity. And there shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. That's it, man. That's it. Alright. Bring that up. Don't worry about this. Go ahead, bring that up. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 25. It says, We lie down, and we lie down in our shame. And our confusion covering for us. For we have sinned against Yahweh, and we and our fathers from our youth, even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord. We got a This is Second Edges chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, Speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So the most high, wait, that's what we out here for, man. How is it put in our ears? Through the scriptures, man. So we gotta come out, prophesy to the people. Where you at? Second Oh yeah, that's yeah, word. Yeah, word, yeah, word. Yeah. Verse 2, and cause them to be written in paper. For they are faithful and true. Fear not the imagination against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee no. that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So when they come up and they say all of that shit, who gives a fuck what he got to say, man? Because we know at the end of the day, people like him that talk like that, that don't believe, in the words of the Most High, that think this is a embarrassing, motherfuckers like that gonna be found dead, man. Go ahead. Romans chapter three, verse three. For what if some did not believe? Right. Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Most High forbid. Yeah, let the most high be true, but every man a liar. Right, because just because you don't believe this, don't mean that you're going to stop the prophecies from happening. Don't mean you're going to stop the nuclear destruction. Don't mean you're going to stop the famines. 
sorry. Don't mean you're going to stop the martial law troops. Someone might hear this message differently. Yeah. Yeah. We are four shots in the last an hour or so. Like, maybe what you're saying to them is makes no sense whatsoever. When they're drunk on vodka, gin, and whatever else they take taking. We decide to come down here on a Sunday night. For people are not in the right mind frame to hear your message. It's a beautiful message, actually. They're like a meeting on a Wednesday night. Is everybody drunk out here? Is everybody and already drunk? ready to not hear the message. But we're not, trying to, really we're, not trying to, we're not trying to get everybody. But well, that's the problem. Why is that a problem? Because God made every single person that's here with earth. So why would you not want to save every single person? You didn't make a decision yeah, yeah. who you pick and choose. God did what? Which God never told <laughs> you to do. How do you, why, how would you get to make the decision on who gets the message who doesn't? Who said I made the decision? You just told me you did. Because I didn't say I made a decision. You did. You just told me to pick and choose. I didn't say that. Either. If you well, pick and choose, you're doing Yeah, well, you're not listening no way. You have an You're not listening. Did God ever have an attitude? No. Yes, he did. Yeah. No, he did not. Not an attitude that Where your Bible turn away. Like? Where's your Bible? Where's yours at? Right it's in front right of here. Right? You can't so tell me you nothing. Can you carry your Bible in your purse? You can't tell me nothing. You'd be surprised. You can't tell me witness, nothing. Because you don't know nothing. nothing. I don't know nothing about you. Know, you don't. Because, because you're not speaking as the oracles of the Most High. You're, you're not, not speaking the scripture. You have no message to give anyone. You make people hate God. Whatever. No, give me, no, God give me never a Zika to you again. Just, you just dismissed me for no reason. Man. You, you, know, you can't explain Because you're not listening. It. Are you explaining it? You what just came to talk. What have you said? What you want, man? What have you said? Tell Which one of them you want? Which one of them you want? Tell me something to make me stay. If you shut up, I'll be able to tell you. But you talk too much. Say something to make me stay. Shut the hell up and listen. Read it out. You're just a regular thing like no one else. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 3. And he said unto me, Son of man, I sent you to the children of Israel to a rebellious nation. First of all, the most side not coming to see. We not, this message is not for everybody. It's not even for all the children of Israel. Bitch ain't even know the message was, man. She ain't even trying to find out what the message was about. It says about a, a, a clamorous woman, man. You just came up here to talk, to try to look pretty. Nobody give a fuck about that shit, man. She just want to fuck somebody, man. She just fuck about it. This is Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. Wait, 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 wait. hold that. Um, give me a, is, he, is Jeremiah, Isaiah, the early chapters about the women uh, ruling over us? This is, uh, this is Proverbs chapter 9, verse, <laughs> verse 12. If thou, if thou be wise, thou should be wise for thyself. <laughs> <laughs> we should have read him Sirach 11 and 7 on that app. Go ahead. But if thou scornest, thou alone should bear it. A foolish woman is clamorous. <laughs> she is simple and knoweth nothing. She just, a, she just a foolish woman, man. That's probably why she out here. Ain't nobody want to deal. Ain't no righteous man want to deal with that shit. It don't matter how pretty you is. If your ass wicked, you talk too fucking much about shit you don't know. Ain't no man, ain't no, ain't no righteous man gonna want to deal with that shit, man. Go ahead. It says, for she sit up at the door of her house on a seat in a high place, so like in the high places of the city, to call passengers who go right on their way. Whoso is simple, let him turn and hither. And as for him that one of understanding, she said to him, stolen waters are sweet, and bread eating in secret is pleasant. Basically tell me to be wicked. But he knoweth not that the dead are there and that and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Wait, start up a little bit. Start up one verse. Go one verse. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 11. Woe unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hands shall be given him. Right. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. That's how the mo that's how uh, Esau rule has this society, where the women rule over us. So she could go talk that shit to some other nigga, because them niggas are listening. But we don't run, we don't, we don't do, 
we don't go like that. We go according to the uh, the order of the, uh, of the scriptures. The Most High, His Son, the man, then the woman, and the children, man. Keep going, I keep reading. Oh my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err. Somebody give me Sirach chapter 26. And, right. and destroy the way of the path. Right. The Lord standeth up to plead. Read that again, destroy what? The way of, the, of thy path. And that's what she came up to do. To destroy the old path that we teach him, man. The most I ain't looking for everybody. We what we supposed to we supposed to preach this message to the homosexuals? That's what we supposed to do? To everybody that wanna listen? Furthermore, who the, who the hell are you to tell us when and where we should go out? If you knew anything, you wouldn't come up here talking. You're not allowed to talk in the churches. You're not allowed to talk amongst us. Go ahead. Sirach chapter 26, verse 25. Wait, wait, hold on. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 13. The Lord stands up to plead and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof. For ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your house. That's it. Come on, the Um, go ahead, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, this is Sirach chapter 26, verse 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. Somebody give me a definition of shamefaced. Watch how this shit go. <laughs> And the definition of a, 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 a bitch. <laughs> Tupac said, they, you wonder why they call you bitch. But that goes back to that whole thing we was talking about with uh, the old past, man. The scripture says Sarah called Abraham Lord, man. A woman coming up talking like that, talking to men like that, has no respect of men. And that goes to that whole thing of feminism, man. A woman feeling that they're men's equals, that they can come up in the group in the midst of men, a, comp, a, a, a group of men, and talk to us any type of way and feel like we should be respectful to her just because she got titties, an ass, and a pussy, man. And a Jehovah's Witness, man. I could give two shits about your titties, ass, and pussy, man. If you be disrespectful, you're going to get disrespect, man. Whether you're a man, a woman, a he, she, or whatever the hell you is. Go ahead, bro. Shame face, adjective, Feeling or expressing shame or embarrassment. No, go to the uh, etymology. Etymology give you a better definition. I got a precept for you in the meantime. All right, read the precept. This is uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 19. All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Exactly. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. Destruction, man. Destruction. I was still, I want more on 26. Yeah, Kai, I was kind. Sirach chapter 26, read, verse. Read that when you read again and you're gonna read Shane. This is Sirach chapter 25, 26, verse 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. The but she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. Watch this. What's the definition? What's the definition of a bitch? A bitch is a female dog. So a shameless woman is a bitch. Read it again. See the feminism? See it? Go ahead. See the feminism? Go ahead. Verse 26. A woman that honored her husband. Nah, nah, go back. You gotta tell the truth for what it is, man. Motherfuckers act like you can't tell the truth, man. As soon as they hear one thing about a woman, they, oh, oh, oh my God. Oh. Thank you, that's nation, man. Sirach chapter 26, verse 25. 
The shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. So what's the difference between the call, calling the shameless woman a dog or a bitch? It's the same fucking meaning. Just two different words. A bitch is a female dog. If, if somebody can get the definition. But she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. Now let's look at it. Let's contrast the fucking differences, man. All right? It's not saying all women are fucking bitches and dogs. It's saying a, shame, a um, shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. You got definition for a dog? For a um, female? Yeah, for a bitch. Yeah, my shit moving slow. Everybody's shit moving slow? Oh, I want to bring out bitch first, man. is a female dog. I read that again, huh? Sirach chapter 26, verse 25. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. Now, what's a dog? What's a bitch? A female dog. So, if you're talking about a female that's going to be counted as a dog, what is that? It's a bitch. It's a bitch. But now, why? Wait, wait. Why? Why is she counted as a dog? Dog is a low animal that will eat its own shit and vomit. That's why she's comparable to a dog. But this is a nation that lacks understanding. It's a nation, it's a female feminine nation. Femi where, where feminism runs rampant. So the minute you hear a word, you get all emotional instead of understanding the meaning behind the word and the context of the sentence. Because it's a nation that lacks understanding. Go ahead. But she that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. She that is shamefaced will fear the Lord. And we're gonna keep going, but hold that. We shamefaced. Shamefaced, 1550s, modest, bashful. Etymology alteration of shamefast from Old English, scamfaced, bashful, literally restrained by shame, or else firm in modesty. Modest and bashful. Let's look up the word bashful. Bashful. Reluctant to draw attention to oneself. Shy. So a shamefaced woman is a woman that's bashful, which means she's reluctant to draw attention to herself. Does that look like a uh, shame, a, a, a woman that's reluctant to draw attention to herself? So I said a shame-faced woman, uh, um, shame woman shall a shame-faced woman shall fear the Lord. Read that. Go ahead, read. Keep reading. Yeah, go ahead. It's Sirach chapter twenty-six, verse twenty-five. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog, but she that is shame-faced will fear the Lord. A woman that honoreth her husband shall be judged wise of all. A woman she, that what? A woman that loveth her husband. You say loveth the honor. That honoreth sure. her husband. Right. Now what does the word honor mean? It means to hold in high value, man. Yo, that's... that's right, so women are supposed nah, to honor their husbands, man. Fact. It says honor your mother and your father, right? Shit, and tricks. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Notice he said bitches, man. <laughs> oh, that's, that's exactly what it is. Boy, bro, read that. A woman that, this verse 26, a woman that honors her husband shall be judged wise of all. See, a woman that honors her husband shall be judged wise of all. Now, guess what? If you have, if a woman has a husband, she ain't gonna come up to five dudes, five black dudes. Yeah, right. You're not gonna come up to five dudes and start talking to us and then talking to us disrespectfully. 
Because guess what it says in Corinthians? That the uh, the glory of man is his woman. Your woman is a representation of you at all times. So it's, disrespe it's disrespectful for her to come up to you, for her to come up to us and start talking to us. That's totally out of order. But she that dishonoreth him in her pride shall be counted ungodly of all. Exactly, and that's what she's counted as. Now we're not her husbands, but we're the men of her nation. We're the husbands of her nation. She came up disrespectfully dishonoring us and expected us not to do the same. Well, I don't give a fuck about what you are. I'll dishonor your ass if that's how you coming. I'm not a, a nigga that bow down to women. Furthermore, I feel like if you come in the presence of men, you should feel worthy to be in the presence of us. You shouldn't come up here talking any type of shit. First of all, we're the servants of the Most High. Like it says in Ecclesiastes, to watch your mouth when you go before the uh, Lord, man. Secondly, we're men. You don't come to us any type of fucking way, man. Let me say Peter's chapter 2, verse 2, chapter 3, bro. God, God, this is Sirach chapter 26, verse 10. If thy daughter be shameless, keep her... <laughs> if thy daughter be shameless, keep her in straightly, let she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. Right. That's it. Okay, that's it. Right. Too much. Well, I get basically, these women in this country have too much liberty, God. man. God. They have no order, man. <coughs> to be real, your woman should be asking you. Your woman should just do whatever. She should ask your permission. Because she's not the head of the relationship. No, is she the equal in the relationship? I got you right here. Go ahead. This is uh, Sirach, chapter 25, really verse 25. Old. Give the water no passage, neither a wicked woman liberty to get a broad. Just be walking around and running her damn mouth. <laughs> Glad we ain't in the ancient days, man. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. This is Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. Moreover, the Lord said, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go. Because the daughters of Zion are proud, man. Proud. And you know what? That same nigga that walked past and said, Y'all, uh, what he say, y'all? Y'all embarrassing us? That's the same nigga that all these women ruling over. Nigga, you embarrassing us because you ain't being a man. Go ahead. And making twinkling with their feet. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. Well, that's what's happening out here. You women just damn butt ass naked out here. How you doing? You just see titties, ass, everything. The most I discovered their secret parts. Made their secret parts discovered. Go ahead. Why you so? I said, why you so? Go ahead. Come. 